This episode was sponsored by MPB, the world's largest online platform for used photo and video kit. Visit MPB. Dot com. In this episode of the podcast, I'm speaking with Felix Hernandez. We're going to be talking about how he creates worlds in the miniature. This is Twitter. Hey, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Uh, today, we're going small on the show, and I get to speak with a guy who, once if you haven't heard of this guy, Felix Hernandez, when you see his work, you're going to be an instant fan. You're going to like and follow him and do all the things to stay in touch with him. Because, um, And I'll, I'll give you a little bit of inside baseball on how I came to know and be introduced to Felix. A friend of mine, Renee Robin, has known Felix uh, for a long time, and she brought him up at one of our community member mixers that we do every Friday. And she was telling me, "Hey, you gotta, you know, go check out this guy's work. It's it's amazing." So I brought it up, and I'm looking at it, and I was blown away. And I've seen a lot of work, as you can imagine. I've seen a lot of photographers' work over the years, but not like this. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna show some images. I'm gonna overlay some images in post-production once I get to the editing phase of this. Um, but I wanted to have this conversation and just kind of introduce you to the joy of work that Felix is creating. Felix Hernandez, welcome to This Week in Photo, man. How are you doing? Hey, Frederick, how are you? I'm, <laughs> I'm really well, and thank you so much for having me. And uh, I, I mean, I'm really, thrilled to talk with you <laughs> yeah this is gonna this is gonna be exciting again i told you when we were doing our little our little pre-interview session that your your work is inspiring in a lot of ways and i think oh. i i had a i had a conversation with renee robin our mutual friend uh about this this whole concept of soup to nuts content creation right where you you are in charge of creative process from the germ of an idea all the way through and you're controlling it all the way through to final product versus capturing work and you know doing the post-production and compositing work later to kind of put put things together you're in control of all that we're going to talk about that before we do that sure how do you describe yourself as an artist like when you're at a party or something or on the beach you're in cancun right so you're on the beach or something and someone says felix what do you do what, what do you tell them i mean that that's a kind of a, a tough question <laughs> that I, I i i find it hard to describe what i do and most people like don't don't get it but i mean the short version will be that i'm a photographer miniature and digital artist so i i combine all those three let's say um disciplines or techniques to create uh, imagery you know uh, yeah in, impactful images at yeah. least that's what i try <laughs> yeah and yeah and it and you, you do it it's successful so when you do that in and you know in, in folks that are watching this you know i'm going to put some images on the screen later um, but I encourage you to go to Felix's website, um, and which I'll put links to in the blog post for this episode and the description in the video. But head over there and check him out. And I'll have a gallery on this week in photo as well. But I encourage you to go to Felix's website first. Um, but when you look at the work, it looks... At, at first glance, first let me describe it, right? From my layman's pers from my layman's spectator perspective, right? Uh, it when you first look at one of your pieces, it looks like just a great shot that has something different about it. I can't put my finger on it, but it's a, it's a great photograph that looked like it took a lot of effort to just, you know, put together and come and meticulously edited and all that. But then you come to find out that everything that I was looking at is miniature and you created the entire diorama, the entire kind of world that you're creating from, from beginning to end. Why? Why do that? So here's the first question. <laughs> Why do that versus going out to the, quote, real world and photographing a rusty old Volkswagen and then taking that shot, that photo of the Volkswagen, cutting it out and then doing compositing work with 30 layers or, or 100 layers? Why do, it, yeah. why do you do it in the real? I mean, for, for me, it has been like a, a, a process. I'm like, a, I'm a graphic designer in the university. I studied the, the career of graphic design. And later, while working, I like uh, discovered photography. Well, back then I had, I 
took some courses uh, of analog, let's say, photography. So I'm pretty pretty old, as you can guess. But then I took a photography, and it was kind of natural. I start mixing photography with, let's say, a photo manipulation or digital art. But uh, I I felt that something else was missing, you know, uh, in this search of your own voice or to find your own style. And uh, I mean, this thing of building small models or setups or playing with toys or all, all, all that stuff. Uh, I mean, I have been doing that since, since I was a, a, a little kid. So. I have always liked to experiment in the in the in the studio when I started doing photography, just not you know doing the work that a client asks for, but uh, going into studio and you know trying different things. And mm -hmm. I mean, just one day uh, I didn't have you know like a model or a project or or the budget to do something big, so I just wondered what would happen if I just play with uh, around with some toys that my youngest uh, kid had there. So yes, I just started that way, and you know, I I did some posts uh, back then. I it was not even Instagram; it was Facebook. I think it was Facebook, and uh, it suddenly kind of went viral. So I, I guess uh, one thing took me to another, and I started to experimenting more with these uh, miniature, you know, models. And at the beginning, they were like really simple uh, scenes with I, with materials and products you can find in your house, in your home, in the supermarket. And uh, I mean, one thing evolved to another. And uh, I started uh, started more going into the uh, miniature uh, modeling and creating dioramas a little bit more complex, making on-camera effects. And I guess I, I don't know why, because a lot of people ask me, hey, why don't just go straight with a uh, you know Photoshop with photo manipulation? But uh, for me, it's 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 my own way to to express myself, and I also love all the process of of making these kind of images using the scale models. There's something like uh, magical, you know, to to be able to grab one object and just turn it around and see it and lighting and trying to do this on on camera effects. But saying so, I, I also do a lot of um, uh, digital manipulation for some images uh, less than, than others, but it's a, it's a mix of you know, photography, let's say crafts, and as well, uh, digital, digital art. Okay, so, okay, I, as we look at the work that you're creating, I get it, you know, crafts and compositing work and photography and process and creative vision, all that stuff kind of blurred in together. But each one of those, Felix, each one of those disciplines is, in my mind, kind of a lifelong discipline, right? You got it. There are model makers in Hollywoods that are doing, you know, working on sets like Star Wars and all these things when they used to do all the miniature stuff, right? But people that are doing the meticulous model creation. And then there's compositing artists that will spend a lifetime getting really good at compositing art. And then, then photographers that are good at lighting and understanding depth of field and composition and all those pieces. But you're, and then the story piece, don't forget the story of the whole thing, but you're bringing it all together, you know, in a really, in a really tight way, you know, and how do you, how do you, how are you able to do that? How are you able to do that? Is it is it just pure joy that's driving it, creative vision, all that, or is it just a natural aptitude in each one of those areas to get the get the story told? No, no, no. I mean, there there's a lot of passion. I love what I do, and um, you were talking about mastering. The thing is that I'm not a master in anything. I, I'm like pretty average let's say in in all the the yes in all the disciplines that i that that i use i'm just i think i'm just good enough in each one of of them to you know to be able to combine them and create my my own images so i'm i'm not a perfect or pro professional you know a modeler i'm not the best digital artist and even really really far away of being a, a good photographer but again for me it's really important to always learn new things uh, new stuff and just combine them to uh, create my 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 images so yes i i prefer to know a little bit of everything that being an expert in just one thing i i get bored like too fast if i'm just doing one thing 
Yeah. Look at these shots here. And folks that are listening to the podcast, I'm showing some of Felix's shots on screen right now. Uh, you know, Felix, when you, when you look at these shots, are they or these models? You mentioned, you know, building scale models and kind of getting into the meticulousness of that. I when I was a kid, I used to build models. You know, I used to have these little these little model cars and the glue and the toothpicks to put the glue. You know, was, my brother and I sit there and build X-Wing fighters, you know, and oh, wow. back, yeah, <laughs> and, and Darth Vader's, you know, TIE fighter, all that stuff. We used to build those as models and then sit them on the shelf and look at them. Right. But never did we push it to the level that you're pushing it to. Obviously, we weren't photographers. We were just building them because we wanted to fly them around the living room. But, but that's why you, you, you stopped playing, you know? Yeah. I, I just ne never stopped. And then I found myself with a camera and photography and was kind of natural, you know, to mix something you have been do doing since you were a kid. And just like now you have a camera to record it, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Are these are these models? Are they just off the? Sh you know, did you just order them off Amazon or go to a hobby shop and buy them, or are they special, special kind of higher quality models that are designed for this kind of work? No, I mean it's a little bit of everything. Some are just off the shelf models, like this one. We are seeing this. Uh, it's called a minibus or Volkswagen minibus. This mm -hmm. is like it was. I mean, the the, the model was off the shelf. But of course, it was uh, brand new. Okay, so then you have to take it and customize it and tweak it and weathering and creating the scene to because these are the characters, right? This is not just a car; it's the, it's the character of the scene. So you you have to work on them. So some are yes, just off the shell, and I customize them. Others are called like plastic kits that they come just apart. You have to build them, glue them, paint them, and you know also weather them whatever so there are really, really different techniques now i'm working also with um 3d models that i have a 3d printer so mm. to make some props or maybe figures and i mean there are a lot of techniques some of the builds i have done are just done from scratch just using like regular objects or paper or plastic or pieces of metal and uh, i mean there are a lot of techniques combined depending on the level of detail, uh, maybe the client or the, the the time or budget you have for making these uh, pieces. Yeah, you know it, what was interesting to me because I love Photoshop and I, you know, I love looking at these images, and it it occurred to me that in looking at when some of the walkthrough videos or the behind the scene videos that you put together was that yeah when you're shooting like this. Like we said at the beginning, you have power, you have the con complete control over the environment and everything's locked down, right? So you could, okay, now I'm gonna do the background. Okay, I want some smoke, so I'm gonna silhouette everything and put some smoke in there so I can composite that in later. So you can, you can go beyond the pieces that they give you in the box for the model and literally create that world in pieces. When you're creating the world, Felix, is it, is it, um, are you do you have the exact shot in mind like this shot we're looking at right now this shot was this shot in your head before you started or was it like oh i have this car this model uh maybe maybe i'll park it like this and uh maybe i'll put this background in there or did you have it all sketched out and kind of designed no. before you began yes more of the time i start with an idea for me the, the concept the idea is more important than the let's say the the final image so normally i will start with a let's say a really clear idea of what i want to 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 achieve this is this for example this image that we are seeing right now is like a short let's say a short story in fact this is like the still version but there's another one that has a little bit of movement and a sound design. And at the distance, you hear like two shots, you know? So it's telling you a story. So all the mood, the lighting, uh, building the terrain, uh, making the background. If it's sometimes the backgrounds, the backgrounds are uh, done for, for real or are printed, you know, in a backlight so I can uh, light in any direction that I want. Sometimes they are like real uh, backgrounds. I go to, to, you know, to a location and just put my set and, and do the photograph there. So, mm. uh, but yes, normally I know what I want to do and then I figure out how I will do it. Nice, okay. And then obviously it's gonna vary, but, but what are we looking at time-wise to put one of these together from the beginning to, you know, to it's ready for you to show online or to a client? 
I mean, that it, it, it all depends. This, for example, this one that we're seeing, this, this is just, uh, you know, miniature DeLorean out of the shell. And yeah. uh, it's in a real simple foreground. The background, I think, was just black or uh, I, I don't remember, maybe gray. And uh, it's a lot of uh, lighting design. And this image is like, I think it's like four or four, four to five different images making the different effects on camera. So all, all the uh, sparks and fire and all the stuff is, is make, uh, is, it was done for real. And you then just overlay overlay each one of these uh, effects done on camera. So something like this can take you maybe one to two days because mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, trial and error, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm, going back mm -hmm. if it's working, if, if it's not working. But something like this is really simple, one or two days. But maybe for other projects like, I don't know, maybe you are, this is also kind of simple. Th this one maybe t uh, took like three to four days because the foreground it's all, also a diorama, the base is a diorama. So mm -hmm. it took maybe one to two days to create it and maybe one more day for the shooting and the post-production. So three to four days. But there are other projects that can take maybe one month, you wow. know, just to build wow. the, yes, so, so, or even longer. I mean, it depends. Uh, uh, for this one, this, is what, this one was like maybe five to six days just to, um, you know, uh, personalize, customize the, this uh, flying flying car, and I mean the, the the production normally is done between one or two days. Post production maybe is one or two days. The let's say what takes longest is the the pre production. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the planning part of it, right? Yeah, getting it all set. The planning and the build. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But it, do you find that it's got to be fun, though, like putting this stuff together, knowing it's going to go into a realistic scene that, that you know, a, a ton of people are going to look at and enjoy when you're putting when we were putting models together back in the old days, it was, you know, it was, no one's going to see the model. Right. We're going to build it. It was purely for the joy uh, in the process of putting it together. Sometimes we went as far as to actually paint them, right? But it was, you know, it was for, to play with the model and put it on the shelf. That was that was basically it. But to know that it's going to go someplace where a bunch of people are going to enjoy it and look at it, that's something completely different. Does that drive you when you're putting this together? Or for you as an artist, is it more about you get your pleasure from the process or is it the, the final result? No, of course I get the pleasure of the process, and I mean I have a lot of, you know, models or or builds that I have never shared just because I I don't know maybe I I just did them for for me, mm -hmm. but at the end yes for me it's really important to share my images and also the process of how I I do my images. I mean if you want also to make a living of this, I mean I, I like it so much that that I'm, this is, this is my way of living. So of course, nowadays you have to share in, in social media and see the impact of your images. And I, 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 I'm not saying that I create for, you know, for likes or to other people like my images, but of course I enjoy, share, enjoy sharing them. And of course I want that, uh, that, that the people that are seeing these images, you know, they are, they they like them, no? At least uh, uh, um, you know, uh, making a comment or sharing or all that stuff that yeah. works for the also for marketing purposes. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of, one of the, the cool things about it is like this shot I was just showing up on the screen a second ago. Um, if you didn't know, it would that would look like a regular photograph, it's just a well-made panning photograph of an expensive car driving through through a scene, and you distress the image a little, so it looks, it even sells it even more. Like this is shot on film, or this is you know, so you know, it, the whole thing is sold. Then then the level deeper, if you're sitting in a gallery and you come up to the person, they're like, yeah, this is a great photo. And then you tell them, yeah, this was actually a miniature there. You're going <laughs> to, you know, you're going to be blown away from that. When you when you're concepting these works, do, are you as the artist, are you is it part of your goal to have the viewer believe it's real or do you want them to know that this was a miniature that you photographed and made look real? Do you want to sell the reality or do you want to sell the, the fact that this is a miniature that's close to reality? 
Yeah, I, I, I both. Uh, mm -hmm. I call it the double wow. Let's say double wow factor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. So it's in, it's important just to see the let's say the the image. You are not seeing the behind the scenes or BTS uh, photos. So mm -hmm. just the image. You ha it, it has to be good enough for people, you know, to stop to seeing it and let's say the first wow. And then I reveal like how it was done. And that's when the second wow comes in, you know? So it's a, it's a mix of both. For me, it's really important to share the process. Uh, um, uh, and, and sometimes, I'm, and I mean, uh, more and more clients are asking me for the BTS videos and the BTS photos. So I think for them, it's also really important to show uh, the process because this is great for, you know, uh, digital content, not yeah. just the final product, but as well, how it was done. Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, especially once you get that second wow, of course, I want to see the behind the scenes. I want to see how this, I want to see how Felix put this together. You know, so, you know, it, it, it's just, there's so many questions about this. When, when you're, when you're looking at these models and you're putting this, one of these scenes together, how are we, or how are you, you know, it's not a we, how are you, how do you, you say you're, you know, you call you, you, you very humbly said you're, you're an amateur on the model making side. You know, I don't yeah. agree. Uh, but but looking at this work, how do you how do you get the skills to make things look so realistic? Right. Like the the rock here and, you know, some of the photos that have is sand in there that that looks so real. Right. It looks very it doesn't look like the models that I would have put together in the day that you can clearly tell that that's a fake tree or that's a fake person or whatever. There's yeah. none of that going on in these shots. These look, these look completely realistic. How did you get those skills, those master model builder skills? Well, you, you start, you know, like when you are into this, you just turn around and everything you see, you try to turn it. Uh, how, how I would do that in a, in a, in a smaller, smaller scale. So you just start like, learning to see, see textures, color, how light uh, hits uh, uh, the, the objects and how I can replicate that in the studio. So like kind of uh, achieving a certain degree of realism in the, in the images, it's a mix of different stuff. It, it has to do with the build, the materials you are using, uh, that they go with the, the scale of the, let's say the model you are using. If you are using a 118 scale, everything around it should be let's say in, in that same scale, but also lighting in the studio is, is really important. Also the physics, what uh, lens are you using? Uh, um, um, also knowing how uh, our brain and our eyes perceive the scale. So how can, you, how can you trick, you know, the eyes of the viewer? There are a lot of things that comes in to, you know, create these images to make them look kind of uh, re realistic. Yeah. Where, where does your inspiration come from for these? Is it just you're driving down the street and you're like, oh, that would make a good miniature scene. I'm going to recreate that. Like, where, where, or movies, like where, where, does it, where does the inspiration strike you? I mean, I guess like most, most creat creatives who are inspired from a lot of places, it can be, well, for me, it's certainly movies and, and movies when I was, you know, younger uh, and from the, let's say the 80s. And um, uh, but it comes from music or books or maybe a friend told me a story or I saw a story or on the work of other artists. You know, I follow a lot of uh, illustrators, more than photographers, to uh, conceptual uh, illustrators. And uh, yes, I mean, inspiration comes from almost everywhere. I'm just always open, you know, uh, receiving things. And then in my head, I start to work in them. And uh, also, I find a lot of inspiration on my dreams. So, you know, I take, take all these uh, knowledge and, and things I have around them. And in my dreams, I come up sometimes with some uh, crazy ideas that, of course, then I have to, like, uh, put them down to create an image that makes sense for, for everyone or for a client. Yeah. Do you, you keep a notepad or your phone or something next to the bed? So if you, you have a dream, you can write it down real quick. Yeah, when I started like using the the dreams for for creating, I did. But uh, I mean, eventually, it just get like easier to remember them. It's it's like an exercise when you go to sleep and when you uh, wake up uh, to remember what you were you were, you were dreaming, you no? Know? And also, you can um, kind of um, achieve some kind of control, not of the dream, but of what you want to dream. You know, you mm -hmm. just have to 
like you saturate your brain of information of a, a, anything you want to make. It's just that like if you were like in one night just seeing the complete series of, of a Netflix, Netflix show, mm -hmm. what happens when you go to sleep, then you start dreaming about what you just you just saw. So it's kind of the same exercise, just putting information into your dream and eventually it will come up in, in dreams with, uh, and of course that mix with who you are, you know, and, and all your subconscious stuff. And you come with, out with a, like different ideas, you know, so yeah. it's a source of inspiration. Yeah. So cool. Mm -hmm. So cool. So, so when you're, with, let's switch gears a little bit, Felix, and talk about the gear that that you're using to put these together. Right? And, you know, going through some of the behind the scenes videos on your website. Um, again, I would encourage folks to be, pop over there and just enjoy all the work. Um, but when you're when you're, what does it look like to put one of these together? Do you have a sand a standard set of okay? I always use this you know, this kind of camera or this lens, this focal length or tilt shift or, you know, this kind of lighting, all that. What what are the, the basic broad strokes of gear that you use to put one of these guys together? Okay. What I will start saying is that, let's say the big secret to make a small, you know, scene look like the, the real one, you have to achieve a great depth of fill. So that's like, let's say the the main secret and mm -hmm. for that you know you can use a lot of different techniques so most people think that i'm using because they are small objects that i'm using a macro lens but uh, as we know as photographers if we use a macro lens we are going to have a really shallow depth of field mm -hmm. and uh, also most of macro lens are not wide enough so we are talking about miniatures but maybe they are like uh, maybe 12 inch or i mean they are not so so small so if you get really close with a macro lens you will just have a part of that model and in a shallow depth of field so in fact i did a little bit of research and just try with different lenses and uh normally i'm working with a 24 a 24 millimeter lens and it's also a tilt and shift because the tilt and shift also allows me to, you know, get even more depth of field. Mm -hmm. And also because I'm getting really close sometimes to the models, uh, it also, also helps me with the distortion. So most of the images are done with a 24 tilt and shift uh, uh, lens. But it depends. It depends on the, big of, um, the, the size of your scene. It depends on the size of your model. And uh, yeah basically is, is is that yeah yeah 24 and then lighting wise big light i'm guessing right you know, or or how you know what are you using giant soft boxes that are, are right above the set or is it a mixture of painting with light and sparks and do, depending on what the what the the piece calls for yeah i mean all 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 the techniques uh i mean um i started like working with uh, studio flashes but like one year ago, maybe more like, no, I think two years ago, I started uh, working with constant light, video, mm. video, video lights. Mm. And, uh, and, and sometimes, let's see if I have, I want to make like an overcast day, for sure, I'm going to work with a really big softbox. But there are all other scenes that maybe you want to harsh shadows. So I'm just working with a, um, you know, without any modifier and even using like a small, small, smaller lights and putting them far away just to create those uh, hard shadows that look realistic, like a, in a really sunny day. So it all, all depends. So like for this uh, image, maybe that we are seeing right now, the Ecto-1, mm -hmm. uh, this, this is a mix of uh, landscape photography with, um, with, with the model shot in the studio, just in, a, in white, in a, in a simple white background. So I took first the, the landscape image. So then in the studio, I had to replicate uh, uh, that light. And so there are a lot of different uh, techniques. I also sometimes do light painting mm -hmm. just with a simple flashlight. Maybe uh, it's a long exposure, maybe one, two, or even three minutes for making one of the images just using a flashlight. So again, it, it depends. When you have to freeze action like explosions or dust or of all of that, then you will have to work with flashes just to freeze the freeze the, the action. So yeah, yeah it depends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it depends on whatever the you know 
like anything, right? It depends on what the vision is for it. But what was exciting and what's interesting, part of what's interesting about all this is the you're building all the pieces. Like I said, like you have all the pieces for the model and you put that together. And then the second phase or part of the, or one of the next phases is to create all the pieces for the composite, right? So now you've, you've got the model put together and that's great. Now the rest is, okay, I need a little bit of smoke here and let's paint it with light and put some highlight here and a light inside the car or things like that. That is, you know, that, that part of it, it, it looks really intimidating, Felix. It looks like, how do, how do you get here? How do you get in there to that level of detail and have that level of patience to make sure, you know, everything is perfect, both on the model building side and on the post side? It, how long did it take you to get good at this? Has it been 10 years? Yes. You know, yeah, right. how, how long? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, before I started doing photography or even, you know, these more professional uh, uh, setups, no, crafts, I, I was doing a uh, digital manipulation that, you know, I started with Photoshop. I use Photoshop, I use Affinity and, um, and another kind of software. For example, uh, we were talking about the lenses to achieve great depth of field. Sometimes mm -hmm. even you need more depth of field, even if you are using this uh, tilt and shift, you go with the technique of focus tacking. So mm -hmm. yes, I, I, I use uh, di different kind of softwares for uh, different tasks, but Yes, I have been using, let's say, uh, uh, Photoshop for the last 20 years. So yeah. I, I know, because I, I'm in charge of all the process, I know what I have to do on camera, and I know what I'm going to do in, in post-production. And this can change. Sometimes I just uh, want to do most of the part because it's fun. I, I, just, I, I don't want to use maybe digital manipulation, so I try to do everything on camera, maybe in just one shot, but when you need to have like more control over the image, then you will take like uh, several photos, you will stick them in Photoshop, you will do uh, on camera effects, practical effects, but as well, you also complement, let's say, in, in doing digital effects. So, yeah. so yes, I mean, for me, it comes kind of natural, again, mixing, mixing these techniques, because uh, I mean, I, I, I have been doing this for, so much time that it was yeah. ju just like evolution, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and everything changes over time, right? So you've been doing this for 10 years, then sensor sizes and performance of cameras has increased over that time. The viability of using continuous light versus having to use strobe for everything, right, has changed the game a little bit. And then now one of the next evolutions, I think, is motion. Right. And being able to do sort of video and that sort of thing. I know you're playing around with that as well. And I want to I want to show a little this thing you have here. So here's a here's a motion diorama with the fire for the folks that are listening. I encourage you to check the video out. But there's fire burning next to a what looks like a dilapidated old abandoned car and with a light that shows up in the sky. Tell me about this. Tell me about this because this is completely different. Right. Then now, now are you are you basically in After Effects now? You know, instead of Photoshop, like what what's happening? You know, I mean, I, I've been trying to learn After Effects. It's kind of similar to Photoshop, but for moving, let's say, moving images. But I mean, I, I have I have had not the, the time to do so. Th these are like really simple animations. This is just uh, done everything in in Premiere in Premiere Pro. So this is just a still image, and then I'm just playing with some uh, already uh, video assets, you know, that, that I buy in, a, in a internet libraries, and yeah. just trying to blend in them as good as I can, and, 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 a lot, and a lot of layer by layer animation. I mean, it's not, that, that is kind of a easy image to, to do, but yeah. the, the base is just a still image. Mm -hmm. You're just still imagining you're adding the motion elements on top of it. Now, now I noticed the yeah. title of that, uh, the title of that video was Take Me There NFT. So are you, are, you, are you doing a series of NFTs? Was that one created specifically for NFTs? And how's that, how's that sort of crypto uh, NFT world going for you? I mean, I, I started like doing these small animations, let's say cinema graphs or whatever you want to call them. Uh, before the the NFT went like like crazy, yeah. so yes, one like it was like 
one and a half year, uh, uh, years ago that this NFT thing started, at least for most of us, because it has been uh, for, for a longer period. But, you know, like one year ago, this all exploded with uh, people, this digital artist uh, selling one, he, one of his pieces for almost, I think, was 60 million, 70 yeah. million. <laughs> so crazy. it went crazy. So, of course, all, all of we as, or most of us as artists, wanted to ju just jump into this uh, new space. And it doesn't, it, it doesn't have to be just like animation or 3D stuff. Uh, in fact, I know a lot of uh, photographers, portrait landscape photographers that are re re doing really, really fine in, in the NFT space, selling their, their stuff. So yes, I, I just like jump in and I mean, I'm not too into it, but it's another, you know, place where you can show your, your stuff and yeah. earn some income yes yeah it's, yeah and why not right and it's it's just like like any like you mentioned using a variety of tools and techniques to get to the to the whatever the artist's vision is right whether it be painting with light or multiple exposure whatever you're doing all these things on that side but it also pays to stay up on what's happening on the technology the other side of technology which is what's happening in this nft space and how is that affecting photographers so yeah and your work Obviously, you know, like you said, you were doing cinemagraphs before cinemagraphs were a thing, and now it's the whole NFT thing, and it's being re-experienced. So you're yeah. already well positioned for that. So that, yeah, that's that's cool. Congratulations on all that. So what's what's next? Th thank you. <laughs> what's next for Felix? What are you, what are you, are you working on something now? You know, what 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 what's what's going on today, and you know, in the future. I mean, yes, I'm, I'm always doing something. Uh, most of the projects, I cannot talk about them, the actual projects, because they are, you know, for for clients. So they are kind of a top secret. Yeah, <laughs> I, I yeah. cannot say anything. So, yeah. uh, yes, I have a bunch of projects going right now. And um, I mean, what's next is I, I, I guess I just want to get better in, in what I do. So the dioramas are getting more and more complex and more detailed and uh, bigger, but also working in in the concept, in the story. So now I'm working like in two or th there are two projects I'm working on uh, that is not just the image. It's a little bit more. It's um, a lot of research of, of history, history mm -hmm. moments, and also script writing. And, uh, you know, just just to have um, to to tell better stories, you know, yeah, yeah, more complete yep. stories. Yes. Yeah, I love it. You know, speaking of that, I wanted to I'm bring up a video now um, that uh, I want you to tell us about. And this is a project you did, I'm guessing for Gucci. Can you tell us tell us what the uh, what what this project is all about and how did it go and how did it come to fruition while I while I let the video play silently here? So what what was the story? <laughs> well, the, the marketing department of Gucci in Italy contacted me because they were going to launch their first uh, let's say collectible, and this was a cooperation between cooperation between Gucci and Hot Wheels. So, of course, this is a miniature car of Hot Wheels branded uh, uh, by Gucci. And uh, they just, you know, uh, commissioned me to create one piece, whatever. I, I had complete liberty to create something showing uh, this uh, Gucci, Hot Wheels Gucci miniature collective car. It's, a, it's like a really limited edition uh, car. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. you're seeing in, in the images. So I came up, I mean, Gucci is well known for their bags or traveling bags and all this stuff. So I just went and proposed them to do a wooden bag, like it was like the oldest one, and uh, building inside that bag uh, the first Gucci store or fabric that it's in Florence, Italy. So it was kind of a machine uh traveling traveling machine you know mm -hmm, like back mm -hmm. to the to the future yeah to yeah. Op open this bag and inside the bag you will have the the you know the the gucci building with the miniature car wow wow i don't know really if it cool. makes sense <laughs> it does it does it, that's cool was gucci happy with this Yes, yes, they were really, really happy. It, they commissioned um, this work to three, three di really different artists. 
uh, illustrator and I think two were like illustrators and me as a photographer and craft builder. And uh, yes, they were really happy. And I mean, this is in their websites and they use it, of course, for the launch of the of their first collectible item. Love it. Love it. Really cool stuff, man. Well, congrats. Congratulations on what looks like a fantastic body of work. And it sounds like there's some treasures that we haven't seen yet that you haven't published. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm look, looking forward to seeing all that stuff. Uh, man, this is this has been a treat to chat with you about this stuff. There uh, are, I mean, I, there, I have so many problems that I just want to, you know, show <laughs> to everyone. But I mean, when they are commercial projects, it's these are sometimes uh, like between maybe three to six months, you know, you start talking with them until you can publish the, the project. It's, it takes long. <laughs> yeah. A long no. time. Yeah. yeah. Well, great so, things. Good, good things come to those who wait, right? Uh, if, if, you know, so obviously, you know, people want to check this out. The website is HernandezDreamPhotography.com. So that's where the stuff no, is. It's a, it is. A, uh, that's my bad because I have a terrible name. It's not Dream Photography. It's Dream Photography. <laughs> so, photography. Really Did I get that right? Yes. Wait, wait. Let me look at the website here. Wait, 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 wait. Let's Dream pull this up. Photography. Dot com. Yes, Dream. I know it's a really oh, bad yeah. name. But... <laughs> it is. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Google, Google is not happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll link to it in the so you won't have to remember yeah, the URL. Right. Just click on the link, you know, in the blog yeah. post for this, uh, and head over there and and connect with this guy. This guy's doing some some amazing stuff. Felix, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I appreciate it. Congratulations on all the stuff that you're doing. Uh, I'm a follower and a fan now, so I can't wait to see see what comes out next. And uh, I would encourage people, you also have a course out. I want you to talk about that a little bit as well. You have a course on how you do all this miniature type photography. Can you talk about that course and what's in it? Yes, uh, I have a, well, I have different courses, but most of them are like really basic and are in Spanish. So if you want like something a little bit more advanced, I have one in, in English that you can get through my website. And this is this course is more focused in the photography and post-production side. And I talk about all the you know basic knowledge you will need. As well, we go through three different exercises. You know, uh, make, making different uh, scenes and different effects, digital and uh, on-camera effects. And yes, I think it's a really complete, uh, uh, let's say, workshop or tutorial or course. Very cool. Okay, and that's all on the website too, so people can, folks can that's get to that. That's all on the website. Yes, all my social media and all the stuff is uh, is there. Awesome. All right, Felix, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Hey, I'm coming down there at some point within the, within oh, sure. the next year or so. I'm going to come hang out with you in Cancun and uh, see what's going on in that studio and on the beach, but on the, in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, Frederick. Uh, now it's. Uh, uh, so a really well known photographer Bong Wong. It's, it's yeah. staying in the in the studio. And uh and yes, I would love to have you here, Frederick. And I mean All I right. have enjoyed uh, talking so much with you. I know my and sorry by the way, because my, my English is not perfect, but I I will try to do my my best. If you come here I will give you like a special tour and show you how to do my, my stuff. Oh, deal, deal. You heard that, everybody. You heard that uh, invitation yeah, yeah, from yeah, Felix sure. to come to the studio, <laughs> hang out in Cancun, and see how he does this stuff. Who could turn that down? So, and yeah. have some margaritas or whatever. <laughs> Done. <laughs> and, and he sweetens the deal with margaritas. All right. So, yeah. And by the way, your English is perfectly fine, man. And, and, yeah, I would okay, not worry about you. that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's perfectly fine. All right. Uh, we'll leave it right there. Thanks, everybody, for watching this. Uh, go check out Felix's work, and we'll catch you next time. This is Twitter. This episode was sponsored by MPB, the world's largest online platform for used photo and video kit. Visit mpb.com.